This documentary will cover William Walker and the American Filibuster Awards of the mid-1850s. The Filibuster Awards are some of the most forgotten and overlooked events in American history. It's truly a shame because the Filibuster Awards were a remarkable series of events that weren't being studied just for how outlandish they really were. This video is going to focus on William Walker, who is commonly referred to as the King of the Filibusters. He was a young American lawyer who, against the wishes of the U.S. government, decided to raise a private army and invade Latin America so that he could form his own country and place himself as the leader. He would even bring along a partner from his law firm and make him vice president of the country that he would found. The Texas Revolution and the subsequent Mexican-American War was a large inspiration for the American filibusters. In the 1820s, Mexico invited American citizens to immigrate to the province of Texas. They promised the settlers that they'd be granted Mexican citizenship, a grant of land, and that slavery would be legal in the province. By the time of the Texas Revolution, nearly 10,000 of the 14,000 people living in this province were settlers from the United States. When Mexico moved to outlaw slavery in 1829, they greatly angered many of the Texan settlers. The settlers found that the abolition of slavery was extremely detrimental to their economic interests. After a dictator took absolute power in Mexico, Texans declared their independence. After a brief war with Mexico, they were victorious and became the independent Texas Republic. They modeled their constitution after the U.S. Constitution and sought to join the U.S. as a state. The U.S. Congress, worried about angering Mexico, repeatedly denied Texas statehood. However, after 10 years with James Polk and part of the U.S. expansionist became president, Congress acquiesced and granted to Texas statehood. The subsequent chain of events could warn a video on its own, but long story short, the U.S. is eventually dragged into a war with the Mexican Federation. The U.S. achieved victory after marching its forces into Mexico City and the next, next massive amount of supply from Mexico. These events took place against the backdrop of the American notion of manifest destiny. The Americans believed that it was their destiny to have a nation that stretched from the Atlantic to the Pacific. With the annexation of much of Mexico's land, the Americans had effectively completed their goal. However, though the U.S. government did not approve, the spirit of manifest destiny was very much alive, and this caused many Americans to look elsewhere for new lands to expand to. This is Grim Battaglia, and you're watching my documentary on the American filibuster wars and the invasion of Mexico. William Walker, a.k.a. the King of the Filibusters, was an American journalist and mercenary. He had led several private invasions into Central America during his lifetime. He practiced law for a short time before he moved to San Francisco to begin work as a journalist. While in California, he led an interesting life. There, he fought in three duels, during which he was wounded in two of them. With his career as a journalist and his life in California not going as expected, Walker came up with a new idea. Now, when most people are dissatisfied with their job, dissatisfied with their life, they'll quit. They'll move to a new city. Walker was not like most people. He decided that the best course of action would be to invade Mexico and found his own country. To him, this was a reasonable response. Following the Mexican-American War, Following the Mexican-American War, there were many American veterans who had moved to the Midwest and now found themselves unemployed. For them, Walker's expedition seemed a great opportunity, and many would join him in his invasions. Walker's goal was to establish English-speaking slave colonies in Latin America. He believed that the U.S. would eventually annex any land that he conquered and would make them into a state, much like had occurred following the Texas Revolution. Furthermore, he believed that, like in the Mexican-American War, the U.S. government would likely support his actions and would send him direct military support. Walker certainly had the support of the U.S. people, but the U.S. government strongly condemned his actions and would never send him any support. He obtained marginal success in his goals, but ultimately, they ended in failure. In 1853, Walker entered into negotiations with the Mexican government for permission set up a slave colony in the Baja Peninsula. 
ancient Mexico, with the Texas Revolution still fresh in its memory, denied Walker's requests. Walker, however, was not deterred. He decided that he would set up a slave colony in Mexico with or without their permission. Walker gathered troops to join him on his expedition to Mexico. His army consisted of 43 volunteers, mostly from Kentucky and Tennessee. Walker and his army marched to the Baja Peninsula and captured the city of La Paz. The city was lightly populated and defended only with a skeleton militia force. Walker was able to easily obtain victory. Brook of a pen, he declared that he was founding a new nation. He adopted a flag, an official constitution, and sent word to nations around the world that his country was now open for trade and diplomatic end. No foreign country wanted anything to do with him, and his nation's legitimacy was unanimously rejected. Mexico was understandably displeased when they learned what had happened. They gathered a small militia force and sent them to liberate the peninsula. Much to everyone's surprise, Walker and his merry band of invaders were able to drive, were able to defeat the local Mexican militia and drive them off. Walker's success was hailed as a great victory by the people of the United States. Upon hearing of this victory, Walker's former law partner, Patrick Wilkins, decided that he would help Walker. For those who may not know, partner here is being used in the legal sense. Law partner is the title of a top lawyer at a firm. Think of it as being the CEO of a company. This means that, like Walker, now a second person with no military experience or expertise is suiting up to help lead an invasion of Mexico. Wilkins was able to use Walker's victory against the Mexican army to gather 200 more men to join him on his expedition to Mexico. Upon arriving in Baja, Wilkins was made vice president as a reward for his efforts. Thanks to Wilkins, the filibuster army had now quintupled in size. The invasion clearly had not been well thought out. By December, Walker's army began to run out of food supplies. They took to raiding local ranchers and farmers to feed their army. It's worth noting that when George Washington's army was starving in Valley Forge, he rejected numerous suggestions by his commanders that he pillage the surrounding community for food. He understood that in order to win, he needed the support of the locals. He needed to give them a reason to support his revolution. When the British began pillaging local farmers for food, support for the American cause was greatly increased. Mexico was aware of Walker's predicament. They sent their navy to blockade the port of Guaymas and cut off Walker's food supply. The blockade was successful and Walker's army began to starve. Desertion spread through the ranks and eventually, Walker himself had to step in. Walker worked let all of his men swear both of allegiance to his country. During the administration of the oath, 50 men refused to swear their loyalty to Walker. Infighting broke out amongst the ranks, and the loyalists of Walker's army captured the 50 men who refused to swear their oath and prepared to execute them. Upon hearing this, Walker personally intervened to defuse the situation. He allowed the 50 men to return to the United States with their weapons and lives intact. His men would state that only Walker would have had the personal gravitas to be able to keep his army intact at this point. Walker's predicament was growing more precarious by the day. Short on men and short on supplies, he relocated his capital two times to avoid capture, each time moving it closer to the United States. While many of his men wanted to return home, Walker was a unique person with dreams or illusions of grandeur. Instead of retreating, he declared that even more of Mexico was now part of his country. The neighboring province, known as Sonora, was declared its own independent country by Walker. He began to prepare an invasion. Twenty men in his capital city began his march to formally bring Sonora under his, under his heel. His march to Sonora started off smoothly. However, before long, he began being harassed by local militia, bandits, and rebels. Walker's army only took minor casualties, but the psychological pressure 
but the guerrilla warfare being waged against him and his men was a serious blow to morale. Many more men began trying to desert his army. Fed up with, his, with the state of his men, Walker began to take strict control of the ranks. He ordered that two of the deserters be executed. This had disastrous effects. The men of Walker's army were unused to discipline, and his hard-handed reaction served only to further alienate them from his cause. Eventually, bombarded by guerrilla fighters and plagued by desertion, Walker was forced to retreat back to Baja. When he returned to the capital of Baja, Walker was met with a grim, grim surprise. The 20 men he had left behind to protect the city had been killed during an uprising by local residents. With this, Walker was forced to accept reality and retreat back to the United States. Upon entering the United States, Walker and his army marched to a local military outpost in Southern California that served to ward off invading Indian tribes. Walker was placed under arrest for violating the international treaty signed to conclude the Mexican-American War. Such was his popularity and status that the American commander paroled Walker under reconnaissance to face trial in San Diego. This meant that he did not place Walker under arrest and instead allowed Walker to return to San Diego based on his good faith promise that he would indeed do so. At his trial, Walker did not deny any of his actions. The judge therefore gave the jury an order that they must find him guilty. The judge stressed that not only was Walker undeniably guilty, but that his actions had caused much harm to the relationship between Mexico and the United States, and that Walker had personally almost driven the two great nations to war. However, the jury would not have any of it. The United States Walker was hailed as a hero and a legend. With the outbreak of the Civil War, only five years away, the nation was extremely polarized. Walker, despite his clear pro-slavery agenda, was a public figure that all sides of the United States had rallied around and supported. The people saw as one of the last great frontiersmen, and he captured their hearts, minds, and imaginations. Majority acquitted Walker on all charges, and he was released a free man. Walker's only punishment was that he was disbarred from practicing law, since upon becoming a lawyer, he swore an oath of loyalty to the United States. But this was no consequence to Walker. He had now tasted a life much greater than that of being a mere lawyer. Walker's adventures in Mexico were really the first leg of his bizarre career. Leaving the United States, his longing for adventure and conquest only grew. In a few short years, he led another army into Latin America. And this time, instead of trying to capture a small, lightly inhabited region, he would try to overthrow an entire nation. This was Grim Battaglia. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave a comment. You have no idea how much that would help me. As a new YouTube channel, every comment, like, and view helps promote my content to new viewers. If anybody has any criticisms, suggestions for new videos, or corrections, please let me know in the content comments below. And please, stay tuned for the next part of this series, which will cover Walker's invasion and conquest of Nicaragua. I hope to see you again in my next video, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please, never stop learning.